Christ bless. So uh, we want to talk about today, we want to get into the topic of the class going to be, um, we're discussing spiritual health and physical health. Phys spiritual health and physical health. Um, stuff like this may not seem important, but it is, especially during the time that we got um, plagues out here. And, uh, you know, we got all kind of, uh, the enemies trying to find ways to, to, to pretty much to kill the children of Israel. So we want to build up our spirit and in turn build up our physical bodies too. Because the scriptures say um, bodily exercise profit little, but we got to survive off the word of God, off every word of God. So we're going to start out with um, the book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. The book Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves. He already told us in the verses before that to sanctify ourselves how? This is regard to food. Not by, by not eating pork, crab, lobster, shrimp. You only eat fish with scales on it and fins. So he's getting to the bottom where he tells us why he's told us what to eat. He's telling us what to eat. Come on. And ye shall be holy. For we can be holy. Sanctify ourselves by not defiling our temple with unclean food. And then we shall be holy. Come on. For I am holy. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Mm -hmm. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So the Most High is telling us what to eat in regards to creeping things, because some creeping things we can eat, like the locust, for instance. I don't know if everybody knows that, but you can eat the locust. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's telling you what beast to eat and what beast not to eat. Therefore, we shall be holy. All right, now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter... 14 and verse 2. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14 and verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Now he's repeating himself. If you notice when you read the Bible, he's repeating himself. The Bible, God, the Most High, is always uh, making it known to us how he really feels. And you're going to see these things when you're keeping his commandments. Because we need to know this stuff. Because we're in a situation that we in the day because we broke God's commandments now we hate each other. We don't understand that God does love us, that we're God's chosen people. The blacks, Hispanics and the Native American Indians. Read it again from, from the top. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Meaning that what we do is going to stick out. So we got to prepare ourselves for that. The, the laws that we keep, these peculiar laws, mean it's going to make us stand out. So people are not going to understand why we don't eat pork, crab, lobster, and shrimp. You understand? People are not going to understand why we don't go out partying in the street. You know, our mom and father, mothers and fathers, they ain't going to understand why we don't celebrate Christmas, Easter, and New Year's. Because God is telling you, you're going to be a peculiar people. I don't want you doing what the world is doing. Does it? Above all the nations that are upon the earth. And he's giving you the reason why. Because I want to put you above all nations. I want you to be holy by keeping my commandments. So I can put you above all nations. That's a beautiful thing right there. That's a beautiful thing. That's why we got to come in here and learn these commandments. That's so Leviticus, Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 is both the dietary law. If you don't understand it clearly in Leviticus 11, you can go to Deuteronomy 14 and get some more understanding on it. Like I said, the Bible is redundant. He makes sure that you get it. So this is the laws of the beast and the creepy things and the things that we should eat. So now, speed it up to the day, a lot of foods that we eat is defiled. Let's watch this video real quick. This video is called What the Hell? It's on Netflix. And uh, it's going to um, how pretty much the wicked of the earth, who is Esau, so-called white man, has defiled the, the beast, the, the cat, the beast, the uh, the sea, and all of that stuff, and just going into it. So that's okay if they're going to do it, because the scripture said in Ezekiel 4, we're going to eat the defiled bread of the Gentile. But the Most High is still going to give us ways and uh, how to eat 
so we can still be healthy and get past these plagues and stuff. So let's watch this video real quick. The diabetes. That's, uh, the arthritis, the heart disease. He got some reading, and it said this is a this is showing how this uh this kingdom, which is Babylon the Great, America is wicked when it comes to putting stuff in our food and giving us uh defiled food. The diabetes, the arthritis, the heart disease, the dementia, the obesity, the cancers are affecting about 70% of deaths. We have an epidemic cascade of debilitating disease that's overcoming the country. 18% of children are morbidly obese right now. We're on par to have one in three people be diabetic in the next 25 years. That's crazy statistics. We have this very dangerous situation. Large amounts of these substances have unquestionably been associated with clogged arteries, high blood pressure, diabetes, autoimmune diseases. Absolutely, the science is solid. We're talking life and death. Health organizations have become co-opted. They are taking money from the very industries who are causing the problems. There's a very strong pharmaceutical industry and lobby that has a, a huge stake in preserving the status quo. We've got a $35 billion statin drug industry. Do they ever want to see that go away? The government's in bed with anyone that gives them the most money. These are government programs. Consumers have no idea. We consider it normal that a town the size of the town I grew up in gets wiped out every year. If that many people were being killed by some terrorist group in the United States every year, we would find them. From a community standpoint, from all other aspects, we're in a state of emergency. They care more about cooperation than these people. They spend at least $138 million lobbying Congress. These companies really have a vested interest in making sure that the public doesn't have information about their effects. Any little thing that comes up, man, they beat it to death. They're trying to silence people into not speaking out and not showing the truth. If that's where you want to go with this, I'm sorry, I'm not the person that you should be talking to. The European, European Association of Style. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, 61, real quick. This is this, this is, I said, we gotta stay away the brother with the tongue. We gotta stay on the milk. All of this stuff identifies the Israelites. The black, the Hispanics, and Native American Indians lead the America, lead this country with high blood pressure, diabetes, and uh, AIDS, whatever you want to call it, STDs, whatever play we lead in the world with that. Let's get the prophecy real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 61. Also, every sicknesses and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. Notice he said, which is not written in the book of this law. You will not find high blood pressure, AIDS, diabetes. You won't find this stuff written in the Bible. God calls it a plague. Read on. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So that's what's killing a lot of people. That's what he was talking about in the video. These, this stuff is killing our people because we are not following the dietary law. In the dietary law, it consists of what food to eat, but it's not just that, because we're going to get into it. It tells you how much to eat, so we're going to get into those scriptures too. Uh, um, they don't tell us that the food is bad because the food industry is directly linked into the medical industry, and when we get sick and go out to buy these medicines and stuff, they making money. They all making money. They're selling us the sickness, and they're selling us the cure. It's, it's bad, man. It's, these are bad. That's why it's called the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. They go hand in hand like the thing. We just watched that the Food Administration is hiding the fact that the food that we eating is defiled. It is killing a lot of us. It's causing a lot of us to have high blood pressure, diabetes, and whatever whatever else you can name. It, it, it's, it's killing us. Why? Because we ain't keeping the laws of God. Now let's go to. Now let's watch, uh, let's go to Daniel now. I'm gonna show you how God said eat. We're gonna get into the scriptures and show you what we're supposed to eat and how we're supposed to eat. Let's read Daniel chapter one. Is that at one? Yes, sir. Start at verse three, sir. The book of Daniel chapter one and verse three. And the king speak unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain 
of the children of Israel. So, okay. so let me give you a, a back story here. We got the king Nebuchadnezzar and the Israelites were in slavery, as we are today. So the Israelites were in slavery under king Nebuchadnezzar. So he would call the, the good children, the smart children, to come live in the king's palace to be good slaves, the talented people. This is what they do today. They, they exploit us for our talents. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Okay. And of the king's seed and of the princess. So he had the children of Israel and his seed. So he was putting this is what they would call house Negroes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Children of whom was no blemish, mm -hmm. but well favored mm -hmm. and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding, science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be no dummy up in there. Go ahead. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the child in. Mm -hmm. And the kings appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. And of the wine which he drank. Hold on. Uh, this, we're going to read verse 3 one more time. You got that um, article? You verse, see, yeah, this the, is the top line. This the top verse line. 3. And the king speak unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs. 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 Yep, the eunuchs. We're going to get into what a eunuch is right there. That's it. Mm hmm. So the king spoke to Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs. I, I, I don't know how I read on that part. So before the children of Israel could dwell in the king's palace, they had to be a eunuch. They had to be a eunuch. Meaning that they had to cut they yeah. would run off. They had to cut. So Daniel, they cut Daniel, the, the four Hebrew boys, before they can live in the class. Because why? They didn't want the, the they didn't want the holy seed mixing with their people. Even the nations know that. But our people want to mix with everybody else. But so but Daniel done had their rod cut off. Now I want to show you this article right here. Uh, uh, you saw it in the middle where it said the time frame. Can you see that, Mr. Andrew? Elder Andrew? Not too good. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Because over here on this yes, side yes, of the world, yes. they did the same thing. They did the same thing. Notice now if it, it, it said the wise children is one who is skillful in knowledge that's the one that they didn't want to produce but if you just this dumb big black book you can go make babies anyway because you ain't gonna never be a benefit to your nation because you ain't that smart see the nations look like we got to take out the smart of the, of the israelites oh yeah I can see that. yeah so we read about george washington carver when he came with, over on this side of the world this is like the 1800s this george washington carver the the um the Israelite who who um invented a whole lot of brilliant man. That's why we got peanut butter, all of this stuff. Because not just peanut butter, all type of agriculture. Yep, mm -hmm. all types. Good. The time frame of when George Washington Carver was castration. See, that's the same thing we just read. That's being made a unit to be castrated. So we're reading the same thing over here on this side of the world. The Bible said they was made a unit. This they call it castration, the same word. He was, he was being made a unit. Go ahead. Had to be during the time when he and his mother were kidnapped by slave robbers from the Kava Moses plantation, or during the time before he became a teenager. Mm -hmm. He was an infant when he and his mother were abducted by slave robbers. White known. Our cultural history so well. Whites know our cultural history so well that while plantation owner knew who the gifted black slave children were. That's heavy right there. Read that again, from brother. Read that again. Plantation owner knew. So that the, the white plantation owner knew who the gifted black slave children were at the time they were born. Because they saw us as a threat. The same thing with King Nebuchadnezzar. The same thing on this side of the world. He saw study our history. Come on. Obviously, Kaba was a gifted child. Mm -hmm. Back on the plantation, whites, whites castrated or murdered all black gifted children and usually murdered or sold their parents. Sounds just like Exodus, Exodus chapter 1. You kill all the males, especially the intelligent ones. Parents to make sure 
that were they were not able to reproduce any more gifted black children. Mm. The castration and murder of innocent gifted black children continue today on the mental plantation here in the United States. Wow. Uh, that's it. Here's what I wrote that. And he's right. Now is they are mentally destroying us with Christianity, with, with Islam. The nations come up with anything to destroy the children of Israel. So now let's go back. Let's go back. Y'all got some y'all good? All right, let's go back to Daniel. Who's in? We're we down to verse 5 now. The book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Mm -hmm. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave name. Mm -hmm. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, Bel Bel mm -hmm. and the Hananiah of Shadrach, mm -hmm. and the Mishael of Meshach, mm -hmm. and the Azariah of the Bendigo. Is that the same thing they did to us on this side of the world? <laughs> the same thing. Changed our names, man. Read up verse 8. Verse 8. But Daniel proposed in, in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, mm -hmm. nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So the king was like, I want to fatten these boys up. And I got this um, African food, this Hamite food that I want to give them because I want to fatten them up. They're trying to feed them a Hamite diet. But Daniel was like, nah, nah, nah. I want to follow God's diet. But watch this. Read on. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. God showed Daniel mercy. Come on. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who had appointed your meat and your drink for why should he see your face worse like and then the children which are of your sort? You're going to get scared, man, if you don't eat this pork chops, man. Again, the king going to be mad at me. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Again, the king going to kill me. If you don't fatten up, man, so you got to eat this dog on crab, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> then said Daniel to Malzah, whom the prince of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, prove thy servant, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat. So Daniel said, look here, man. Give me ten days. Prove me your servant. Give me ten days and give me pulse to eat. And water to drink. And water to drink. Uh, you want to read that? Oh, uh, yeah, just down right there. That's all we need. A, this is what book on pulse is. A pulse is an edible seed that grows in a pod. Pulses include all beans, peas, and lentils, such as baked beans, red, green, yellow, and brown lentils. So pulse is basically basically just beans, herbs, beans, herbs. That's all it is. A whole lot of vegetables. What they were, what they were called today are uh, vegan. Dan was on a vegan diet. All he had, up there was some pictures. So he was on a strict bean diet, which for all the peanuts, butter beans, all type of beans, man. Them things full of protein and stuff. Full of it. A lot, a whole lot of uh, 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 fiber. Yep, fiber and help, yep, help, healthy um, purposes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what we at? Verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. Then let our continents be looked upon before thee. And after we eat this pulse for ten days in water, let them, then you look upon us, read on. And the continents of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And the Hamites, you check out the Hamites too. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. Uh -huh. So he can send it to them in this matter, uh -huh. and prove them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their continents is appear fair 
and fat and flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. They was in tone. They was toned up. They was looking good. Cut. Yep. Look way better. You know. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and give them pulse. Mm -hmm. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. This is the point. This is the point of all that. Daniel denied the king's food, the defiled bread of the Gentiles, denying the commandment of the king, and following the commandments of God, God gave him knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Read on. And Daniel had understanding in all vision and dream. And he added on to what Daniel had. He added on to that. Now I'm going to let you learn how to interpret dreams. And when you read on, he found favor and came number two in the whole kingdom because he stood for the laws of God. But we go in here to show you that you don't have to be, eat meat all the time. It's in the scripture. You can survive our lentils and be healthier. You can. This European diet that we own, that's not of God. That's of the East. That's of the, our oppressors. Three meats a day. We don't, you don't got to eat like that. You don't got to eat like that. So from there, let's go. I'm going to get some more examples. Let's go to Psalm um, 37, 29 through 31. You know what? When you look, look at a lot of people today, when they eat those dry beans, and eat a lot of those beans, and don't stay away from that meat, you look at their skin tone, it look way smoother than people who live out on meat and drink all this type of milk and soda. This stuff right here is a proven fact. So we see right here in the Bible, when Daniel did it, we know it's a proven fact that it's true. Mm. Because you see people today, they're doing the same stuff. They're eating nothing about straight beans. I'm not talking about the beans in the can. Because they got a lot of sodium and crap and that stuff. I'm talking about these natural dry beans that you get and you got to cook it the proper way. You see the difference in their looks. Because it seems like they got a glow on their look because their skin becomes the dry beans. More. That's right. So we're going to prove what we just said. Let's get Sirach 37 and verse 29. And the Apocrypha, the book of Sirach, chapter 37, which is uh, page 93. Chapter 37 and verse 29. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing. Insatiable means to have control. Don't just be throwing sweets down your mouth. Dainty is sweet. That's what when he's talking about dainty thing, he's talking about sweets. Don't be eating too many sweets. Yes, cakes, pies, candy, skittles, and all that. God says, be not insatiable to any dainty thing. <laughs> Nor too greedy upon meat. No, y'all see that? Nor too greedy upon meat. What did Daniel eat? For 10 days. Oh. No meat. And he looked how he looked. So the Bible is that's called the size of what day, what God told Daniel. Read on. For excess of meat bring it sickness. Like, like what? Diabetes, what we just read, what we just cancer. High blood pressure. Because when you actually watch that show, that documentary in full, it'll tell you that we get these cancer. The cancer is coming from the uh, chemicals that they put in, in the meat. Mm -hmm. That's where cancer is coming from. Read on. And and surfeiting, surfeiting mm -hmm. will turn into cola. Surfeiting means to do in excess. Mm -hmm. To do in excess. So you can't be eating a whole bunch of meat. It's saying the same thing gets repeated itself. That's how you get cola. Exactly, exactly, exactly. By the time, most of us, by the time we're 40, you got to go get your colon, you got to get a colonoscopy, and they put that thing all in, and then some of us been eating beef all our life. I'm talking about too much beef, because the Bible said you can eat beef, but you're not supposed to eat beef every two or three days, every day. You're not supposed to have meat every day. We just read that in game. We're going to get some more examples of, of that. The Bible says, be not insatiable to too many meats. That's what it said? Yeah. Okay, read on. By surfeiting or overeating, come on. Have many perish. Have many what? Have many perish. Mm -hmm. And that's going into meat. That's going into sweets. That's going into all this stuff. Read on. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. But he who take heed to these commandments prolongeth his life. I'm gonna show y'all that now. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse twenty nine. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verse 29. <laughs> and God said, Everybody got it? Yeah. And God said, Behold, 
I have given you every herb bearing seed, uh -huh. which is upon the face of all the earth. Notice the subject matter: herb bearing seed. Read on. And every tree. And every tree. Read on. And the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. All of them we're dealing with fruits and vegetables. That's all they're talking about. Fruits and vegetables. Read on. To you it shall be for meat. To what? To you it shall be for meat. That's what you're supposed to eat. That's what you're supposed to eat. We're going to show you in the scriptures where the meat was introduced. But at this point in time, meat was not in our diet. It was not there. How do you think that the, the animals didn't eat each other on the ark with no? Because they was, veg they was vegan or vegetarian. They didn't eat all um, meat. We're going to show you that. From there, let's go to Genesis uh, 5 and 5. Because what we just read in Sirach, it says, By surfing they have many perished, but he that keepeth, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Prolongeth his life. Now let's give an example of prolonged life by not eating too many meat. The book of Genesis, chapter 5 and verse 5. Because what we read in Genesis 1 and 29 pertains to Adam. Adam. So Adam and his generation was eating um what we just um seeds, vegetables, fruits, and vegetables. That's what Adam was eating. But well, watch this about Adam. Read on. Book of Genesis chapter 5 and verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. It prolonged his life. He was, his life was prolonged because he wasn't putting defiled food in there. He wasn't eating too many meats. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go to uh, Genesis 27 and 7. Just one more example, a couple more examples. No, while we hear Genesis 6 and 3, I'm sorry. Then we go back. We're going to deal with Abraham. Well, Abraham was uh, 175 years old. But he didn't eat. Abraham only ate um, meat when it came to sacrifices. They didn't eat meat all the time. You had a guest over or something, you have a sacrifice, and then whatever was left, you give it to your servants and throw it away. This freezing freeze meat? No. It's not healthy. We don't supposed to be eating frozen meat. Once that blood came out of that meat, you eat it, you throw it away, and that's it. That's how our forefathers did. Uh -huh. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, and verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Uh-huh. Meaning his, his understanding of his laws. That's why Adam was Adam had an understanding of his laws. He knew, okay, he knew what to eat. He knew how to move. That's why he lived nine hundred and certain years. Some of our years, the Lord's spirit was with him. And that same spirit is with us today. We read it from it. We read it from it. Read on. For that he also is flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Because of our sins. Because of our sins, our lifespan was cut short. All right? So, from there, from there, go to... Uh, Let's go to Genesis chapter, no, John 6 and 63. John 6, 63. Just show what the spirit is. It said, my spirit shall not always dwell with man, for he is flesh. He is flesh. And what we talk about, uh, spiritual health and physical health. When you feed your spirit, this word of God, your flesh going to follow your flesh gonna be healthy, like Kevin Joel was saying. You can see the glow. It's gonna come out of your skin. You gonna have energy. You know what I'm saying? You gonna be able to work, but you won't be complaining about being hurting all the time. If <laughs> you follow God's commandments, you have the energy to work. The Book of Saint John, chapter six and verse sixty-three. We're dealing with the Spirit. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The Spirit of the Most High God. Read on. The flesh profited nothing. Mm -hmm. The words. That I speak unto you, come on. They are spirit, mm -hmm. and they are life. We gotta obey and obey these commandments. And what we just read in Sirach, that's a commandment. That's a commandment. He said, "For excess of meat bringeth sickness. Be not insatiable to any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats." That's the law. That's the spirit of God talking. That's the law. All right. So from there, let's go to um, let's go to Proverbs chapter fifteen, verse seventeen. We said that we was gonna get into Abraham, but just so just I'm gonna just put Abraham was uh, lived to be hundred and seventy five years old, so we ain't really gotta touch him now. But go ahead. The Book of Proverbs, chapter fifteen and verse seventeen. 
Better is a dinner of herbs mm -hmm. where love is mm -hmm. than a strong ox and hatred therewith. Mm -hmm. So the most I said, you good if you just got a, a table full of vegetables, fruits, and seeds and then a big fat steak or an ox. But hatred is what hatred is. So it's better to, you don't need all this stuff. You don't need all this stuff. So from, go, go ahead. Read, read that again. Read that again. We got some more milk. No, the, book, that. the book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 17. Come on. Better is a dinner of herbs. So that's a good thing to have a dang of dinner full of fruits and vegetables. All right. Read. Where love is. Where what is? Where love is. What is love according to the Bible? Keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. All right, so now you got to remember, now we deal with two types of love in the Bible. Love, first and foremost, deals with keeping the commandments, the laws, statutes, and commandments. The second type of love is going into how you deal with one another, showing love for one another. So this goes to you sisters. All right, so listen up and listen good. Read that part again. Where love is. Where love is. So that means when you make this food, it should be, it should be prepared with Love. Love that thing. Because you can tell, you can tell when a sister do not love or ain't in, she ain't feeling it. Because you gonna come home and it's gonna be dang or Big Mac on the table. Oh, it's gonna be nasty. Yeah, it's gonna be nasty. It ain't gonna have no seasoning to it. it ain't gonna taste like nothing. This gonna look like slop on a plate. So, man, how long did it take you to make this dinner? Ah, uh, shoot, five minutes. Oh, hell to the no. Mm mm. Mm mm. Read that again. Better is a dinner of herbs uh -huh. where love is. You all got to make and prepare that food with love, man. Because, hey, like, like what Joe was saying earlier, if, if you ain't going to eat the right food and then you put your heart into it, it's going to taste good. It's going to taste good because you're focusing on what you're doing. You, you prepared it because you know that, hey, this thing's got to be dang on, uh, uh, nutritious for you and your family. All right. If you feel in your family a bunch of dang on garbage, you don't even take the time out the dang on look and see what's in the dang on thing. You you don't even read the can. You don't even read the pack. You see, I say you just feed your family all type of garbage, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I love you, baby. Here you go, eat that. Baby. Well, I would say, <laughs> yeah, try again, try again, try again. <laughs> well, our praise, that's right, that's right. So we got we got to do everything we do. We got to do it wholeheartedly, man. Mm -hmm. Unto the Lord, unto the Lord. All right, so let's go to Genesis. I had mentioned Noah. I got to get the spirit. Let's get to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 17. Because we mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, our, our lifespan was caught, cut short because men began to reproduce and be more wicked. And mainly men started mixing with other nations. God told us not to make mix with the other nations. Not to mix with the other nations. So from that, God was like, oh, no. The Holy Seed mixing with, with the regular man. So now I'm about to cut your lifespan short. From 930 years to 120 years. But this is a process over time. It just didn't happen right off the bat. Because now we're dealing with Noah time. And Noah lived to be real, real, real old. But it's, it's a prophecy. When you read this Bible, the stuff that you're reading is not happening right off. It's, this is the book of prophecy. So when Genesis 1, 6 and 1, he said, I'm going to cut man's life short. It happened later. He began to decrease as time went on. As it became more wicked, just like today, our life uh, span became short. That's why we live how long we live today. 80 years, 660. Israel living 30, 25. Why? Because we're wicked. We got to repent. That's why we got to push repentance to our people. That's why we die because we're wicked. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, and verse 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of water upon the earth. Because y'all are wicked. Read on. To destroy all flesh, mm. wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. The breath of life is going into man because he ain't destroying the animals. The animals wouldn't die in his sin. Just let you know who he mad at. Men for being wicked. Read on. But with thee will I establish my covenant. But with you know I'm going to establish my covenant. Read on. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife. And thy son's wife with thee. Uh huh. Now tell me verse 20. Verse 20. Of fowls after their kind, 
after cattle, after their kind, of every creeping things of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Uh -huh. And take thou unto thee all food that is eaten. Mm -hmm. and, and at this time there was the herbs. You know, that's what they was eating at this time. We just read that in um, what, Genesis 1, 29. Mm -hmm. That's what they were eating like this, like the picture here. They was eating the herbs and the lentils. Herbs and the lentils. But, and thou shalt gather it to gather it to thee, mm -hmm. and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Uh-huh. So that's for the you and the animals. All of y'all gonna eat keep eating these vegetables, no, because you righteous in my sight. Who knows what the rest of the people is eating? That's why they put them to death. You know what I'm saying? They had these days doing some wickedness, man. So from there, let's go to uh, Judas. Let's go to our four mother Judas. We're getting into the sisters a little bit. Come on, touch, touch on the sisters. So God, Judas got the Judas chapter 8, verse 4 to, to 8. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8, verse 4. We're going to read to verse 8. And the Apocrypha, the book of Judas, page 48, chapter 8, and verse 4. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. Mm -hmm. So her husband had been dead three years and four months. Come on. And she made her a tent upon the top of her house mm -hmm. and put on sackcloth upon her loins and were and were her and wear her wood her widow's apparel. So she was still lamenting the mourning for her husband. Read on. And she fasted all the days of of her widowing, widowhood, uh -huh. and save the eve of the Sabbath, and the Sabbath, and the eve of the new moon, and the new moon, and the feast and solemn days of the house of Israel. So you gotta imagine this thing, man. Judas fasted. <laughs> Judas fasted for six days. She ate on the Sabbath. On the eve of the Sabbath, she fasted for six more days, and she ate on the Sabbath. She fasted for six more days, and she ate on the Sabbath. Then the new moon came, she would eat. She only ate food, man, during the feast of the Lord. Through the feast of the Lord. You know? Verse 7. She was also of a goodly continent. She was what? Of a goodly continent. She was beautiful. That means she was still beautiful. She was a beautiful woman. Even though she didn't eat in excess. You know? And very beautiful to behold. Very beautiful. Come and on. her husband, Manasseh, had left the gold and silver and manservant and maidservant. So, you gotta think about this thing. Judah had money. How, how many of us that got money go fast like that? We're gonna be in Texas Roadhouse. We're gonna be doing all kinds of We're gonna be at the most expensive. You know what I'm saying? So, too, she had money. Right. Listen, this showed that this woman had the spirit of the Lord on her. She had the spirit of the Lord on her. But we don't. And cattle and land, mm -hmm. and she remained upon them. Mm -hmm. And there was none that gave her an ill word. And nobody had nothing bad to say about you. Even though she was rich, she still fasted because what fasting does is bring you closer to the Lord. It builds up your spirit. Mm -hmm. Even if you, uh, who would fast for somebody other than yourself? You understand? So if you love your your parents, or oh, I don't say that. But you love your brothers and sisters in the truth, and the brothers in truth, and the uh, sister in the truth is struggling with something we fast. You know what I'm saying? That's something that we can do for each other. But she feared God greatly. Because she feared God greatly. Okay, go down to verse 8. Yeah. Okay, so that's Judas right there. She fasts. You see how she fasts? Often. Very often. Let's go to let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Understand this now. Hey, that's how strong it was back in the day. You go and, and without food for six days or days now, <laughs> you might not be alive after the third day. <laughs> I'm you, you can try. try. You can try. Yeah, you can try. And pray the Lord will let you give up the ghost. <laughs> well, you know what, though? What's so funny about fasting, really? But it's really serious. People don't realize when you put your body in a fast mode, you actually let your body heal itself more quicker. A lot of people think, oh, you gotta put food, food in your body just for your body to heal. But that's not true. Your body can heal because you gotta toss it in your body 
that actually gets it all working more better and burn all fat and burn all, all the bacteria in your body. That's why they tell you, you can, when you wake up in the morning, just drink a glass of water and try not to eat nothing for at least a good four hours, five hours. And then probably go piss up in your body because you're giving your body nine time to be able to fight all the different bacteria and do all the other kind of stuff. That's why a lot of people sleep at night. They got an article, you drink a glass of water at night before you go to sleep. It help, um, what do they call that stuff that go in your leg? Yeah, the water, cold water, water make you think, you make you think you're full of the truth. Like the other stuff. It help you when you sleep at night. So when you wake up in the morning, you feel a whole different in your body. But you got a lot of people like to eat food, lay at night, they go to sleep, and they wonder why they have a bad dream, or they wake up with their body aching, all that kind of stuff. That's the reason why. Hey, we're going to cover that in the scripture, too. We're going to cover that. We're going to get to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go to um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. No, verse 1 and 2. I don't want to come to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Uh -huh. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, wow. he was afterward and hungered. Like Eli said, we were stronger back then. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Read on. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So when you are fasting, when you are fasting, read the Bible. Study the Bible. Take your mind off of everything that you're going for. The Bible will tell you what to pray for. You might be so tired, I forgot what I'm praying for. You'll find it out that the Bible is going to be shown to you. So that's how you, when you afflict your soul, you're helping to build your spirit up. Because some brothers might be struggling with um that uh, uh, fornication spirit. Some brothers might be struggling with that weed spirit. Some of our sisters might be struggling with the eating spirit. Whatever, gossip spirit. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, the hatred spirit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, when you afflicting your soul, you ain't got time to be hating on nobody. You ain't got time to be gossiping. You ain't got the energy. You don't have the energy to do that. Your mind should be focused. When you are fasting, this is what Christ told him. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the mouth of God. What Christ was doing, he was meditating in the scriptures. Even though he, he is the word of God, he knows he's doing this for us. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what he was doing. Showing that when you afflict your soul, you get into the Bible. That's the whole point. What's the use of fasting if you ain't going to study the scriptures? Because that's food. This, this, this Bible is food. This is the spiritual food that I'm talking about, which leads to a physical health. Exactly. And exactly. Uh, this, this is another little hint, too. Because whenever I fast, I do the same. As, if it's something that I don't quite understand, I'll save that part of the book or that subject just for when I go to fast. Because if you ever do that, when you, for me, if I'm, back, if I'm struggling with something I don't understand, I want to I sit there all day long until I get it. I, I got to figure it out. And before you know it, when you're fasting like that, hours go by quick. You don't even think about food because you're focusing on trying to get the answer. You see what I'm saying? But just imagine, you don't do that. Now you're exalting all your time and energy toward that going uh, uh, fussing, fighting, gossiping. Don't you know you're expending a lot of energy doing that? Just in a matter of 30 minutes, you can find yourself hungry. Because why? You're talking and you're burning up all that calorie instead of preserving the little bit of energy that you have inside you. So therefore, when it comes to fasting, yes, it's good. If it's something that you don't like the burden of bringing, if it's something that you don't understand, save that subject or that part of the book for just that time. For when you fasted. Because when you when you really want to dive into something, you really want to get to understand it, that's the time when it's gonna come on you. It's gonna come to you like a ton of brick. You're like, damn, I didn't know this thing was gonna actually work like that. It works every time. At least for me, it works every time. Because if it's something I can't stand for stuff to beat me. Yeah, I cannot stand it. So I'll sit there and I don't I don't want nobody calling me. Don't say nothing to me. Don't come to my house. Don't ask me a question. Nothing. I just the hey, I want to focus on this because that's when you get your understanding and the most high is dealing with you like that. Because like you say, 
You affect, you afflicting your soul. And that's the only time the most high is going to come down and deal with you. Right. When you read through the scriptures, when you read through the scriptures, you read all about it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that's how we got the commandments. Moses, what Moses did? Fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Then come see me. Me and the Lord said, don't bring that defiled uh, body and temple and spirit and that nasty stuff you've been eating and eating before me. Yeah, you're going to die anyway. The most high can't come before sin. Before he started dealing with you, you got to get all of that stuff out. That's why we got to re repent and clear our mind before the most high started dealing with us. And he deal with us how? By applying his words. So when you do fast, exactly, you get into the word. You eat this Bible. Mm -hmm. You eat it. The Bible talk about that. Yeah. I think we got that. I got that scripture here, but go ahead. Yeah, but what I was going to say, you know, that truth, Elijah, get to bring it out. Because I know the first time I did my fast, I did it right into the Bible. And that was the roughest day I had my whole life. Because mm -hmm. when you sit down, you look at TV, see like that everything you want to eat pop on TV. <laughs> but the second year when I got more experience, started learning more and more about the scriptures, and I realized that you know you put to be fasting with the scripture in your hand, studying, and turn away from that TV, you realize time go by so quick you like, dang, it's only time already. And you ain't even think about it when you realize, like, damn, you know what? I ain't even think about eating nothing. Until the end of the fast. Yeah, until, until, until the end. Like, there you go. Exactly. So we just read Matthew 4. Man shall not live by uh, bread alone, but by every word. So I'm going to jump to 20. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. So when he came from his fast, the first thing he did was go teach his people. Get his mind right with the Lord. He don't get to get the Bible in you. Then you go teach your people. Read on. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. To the Israelites. Read on. And healing all manner of sickness. Because why? He took that, he ate that Bible. He ate the word of God and went and fed it to the people. And guess what? They was healed. All manner of sickness. Just going into everybody in here. Before we came in here, we were sick. We were sick. You can't let that old sickness rise up because it's still dormant. Mm -hmm. Everybody in here was sick. That's why we repent and trying to get healed with the word of God. That's why we here. Read on. And all manner of disease among the people. He said all manner. It don't matter, man. It don't matter. All manner of disease among the Israelites. Read on. And his fame went throughout all Syria. Mm -hmm. And they brought unto him. And his fame was not Syria is all the way over here today. Mm. Everybody going to learn about Christ the Black Messiah before he come back. That's right, that's and it's still going out. You know? All sick people that were taken with diverse disease and torment. And that's our people today. Our people that are stricken with the diseases and torments. Torments in our mind. You know what I'm saying? Diseases in our body. Being afflicted. Come on. And those which were possessed with devils. Some of our people got the devil on and those which were lunatic. Mm -hmm. Some of our people crazy is all oh, hell. Oh. And <laughs> yeah, they got on them. <laughs> right. It's hell. It's hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on, we don't. We don't. And, and those that had the palsy. No. And he healed them. And he healed them. And he healed them. So this word, this Bible, that's why it's very important. We go out here and preach this gospel. That's why we gotta preach this gospel, man. We gotta preach this gospel. Alright, from there, let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. We had a bug out brother coming here the other day. Speaking of bug out. I got healed. Man, man coming here talking about he got a healer on his head. Bro, you need to repent. If you ain't gonna repent, get out. Get out. We repenting in here. And the Apocrypha, the book Wisdom of Solomon, page 67. Chapter 16 and verse 12. For it neither it for it is for it was neither herb nor modifying plaster mm -hmm. that restored them to health. So to let you know that the herbs and the bandages and all that stuff, they helps, it helps, but it, this that wasn't what really healed you. But read on. But thy word. But what? But thy word, come oh, Lord. Come on. Which healeth all things. Mm -hmm. So the word of God is what heals all things. All things. Apply it, meditate on it, and apply it to your life. All right? From there, let's go to Psalm 107, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, and verse 20. 
He sent his word and healed them. Uh -huh. God sent his word. Now the precept that uh, Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20. So 147, verse 19 and 20. He sent his word. He sent his word and it healed them. And it healed them. God sent his word and it healed them. Let's see who he healed. Who the, the book word of, meant for. The book of Psalm, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He sent his word to Jacob. Come on. His statue and his judgment unto Israel. Come on. He had not dealt so with any nation. Mm -hmm. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. That's why the nations can eat all of this stuff because they got a appointed time where God going to deal with them. But he deal with us as we break his commandments. He judge us. He put sickness on us. He put diseases on us. If we don't apply God's words, then we will be judged. We will be judged. But he sent his word, which is his son, Jesus the Christ, to heal us. That's why we got to repent in Christ and now we're being healed as a people. We're coming back together as that one stick. All right? So from now let's go to uh, Ezekiel 3. I'm going to read 1 through 3. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, Eat that thou foundest, eat this roll, and get speak unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Read one more time. Read which? Oh, three and one. Three and one. Yeah. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, mm -hmm. eat that thou foundest, mm -hmm. eat this roll. And go speak into the house of Israel. So this is the, the, the angel visiting um, Ezekiel. He said, eat this robe. And this robe is the word of God. That's what it represents. Eat it. Eat this Bible. Read. So I opened my mouth. Mm -hmm. And he caused me to eat that robe. Come on. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this robe mm -hmm. that I give thee. Mm -hmm. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Because it's the wisdom and knowledge of the understanding of the Most High God. That's what this role is. That's what it represents. The Bible. That's what it represents. So from there, we go to, let's go to Revelation now. Revelation chapter, nine, chapter 10, verse 9. I'm going to expound on Ezekiel. I'm going to expound on Ezekiel. We're going to go to Revelation and see what he told John. He told John and Revelation the same thing. Eat this roll. Same thing with Christ said. What Christ said? No one shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. The book Revelation chapter 10 and verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it mm -hmm. and eat it up. Mm -hmm. And it shall make thy belly bitter. Mm -hmm. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So he told Ezekiel that it's going to be in his mouth sweet as honey. But he told John that it's going to be in your mouth bitter. Bitter. So it's going to be bitter and it's going to be sweet. Let's read. Let's find out. Let's go to Matthew chapter um, 10. Let's explain that. Matthew chapter 10. Because the sweet part is getting the kingdom, receiving the blessings, receiving the knowledge from the Most High God, the knowledge and understanding of, from Christ. Like example, you, you find out that, guess what? I'm an Israelite. we God's chosen people. All that stuff is sweet. It's like, yes, yes. You mean to tell me we God's chosen people? We're going to be the one to get the kingdom? All that stuff sounds good and dandy. You know what I'm saying? The, the promises pertaining to the kingdom of heaven pertains to us. All that stuff sounds real good. That's the sweet part. This is what we're going to go through. This is what the bitter part that he was showing Ezekiel. When you come to follow Christ and say you're going to keep the commandments, this is the bitter part. Meditate on this thing. When you're going through this thing with your family, when you're going through this stuff with your doggone wicked on your job, and everybody coming up against you because you're keeping the commandments, you know what I'm saying? Read this because Christ has warned us what you're going to go through. This is the bitter part. The sweet part is getting the kingdom. But the bitter part is what you got to go through to get it. So we're going to read it. All right. Oh, verse 32. The book, of, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, 
Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. You want to see something bitter? Go in your job and say that Christ is black. Go, go to your mama house on Sunday when they got all that pork chop in there and the Sunday dinner and say, Mama, you know Christ is black? That's their bitter part. They're going to kick you out. That's what they're going to do. You know? Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So, but Christ said you got to go through that. You gotta, you gotta uh, profess Christ, even though you're gonna go through that. Because why? He gonna claim you when it's time for you to go to the Father. Read verse thirty-two again. Verse thirty-two: Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, mm -hmm. him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. That's the sweet part, you know. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Uh huh. Read verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. Same book. Just go to verse 22. Verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. That's the bill. That's the bill. That's the bill. Read it again. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So when you say you're going to carry you an Israelite and you're going to keep these commandments, I'm telling you, everybody's going to hate you. So don't worry about it. That's what we got to go through. The Bible talk about us going through the fire. That's the bitter part. Being hated by all men, men say. Why? Because this world is wicked. This world just want to do what they want to do. They want to celebrate Christmas. They want to eat unclean food. You know what I'm saying? They want to break the Sabbath. You know? But he that endured to the end shall be saved. That's the sweet and the bitter. It's in one sentence. That's the sweet and the bitter right there. Oh, let me get one preset. Give me uh, Sirach 21, 21 verse 12, real quick. Sirach 21 verse 12. Because you understand, a lot of times when we, when we introduce this Bible to people for the first time, and they hear some of the things and the contents that come out of this book, a lot of times people tend to say, you know what, I don't want to have no parts of that, man. Because a lot of the stuff don't sound godly, it don't sound, it don't sound righteous. But listen to what the Bible says. Read that. And the Apocrypha, the book of Sirach, chapter 21, and verse 12. Uh -huh. He that is not wise, meaning those that do not fear God, do not have the commandments, read, will not be taught. He will not be taught. All right? That's those brothers and sisters that hear this truth and say, you know what? Hey, I ain't trying to hear none of that stuff that you're saying, bro. Hey, hey, get away from me. I don't want to hear that. Read. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. But now he said, now and there is a wisdom that multiplies bitterness. Bitterness is this wisdom that make you say, "Damn, God talk like that? He's going to kill people. He's going to kill women and children." That's the bitterness. It's like, man, I, I should have never even picked up this book, man. You mean to tell me I can't have more than one dang a woman? Man, I, I don't want to deal with that, man. That's that bitterness because now you start to learn the laws, statutes, and commandments. You start to learn the ways of the Most High. And now it don't seem so sweet. The sweet part now is gone. Because all the, all the fun part about, oh, you know you Israelite? You know Christ is black? You know we God's chosen people? That's all sound fine, sweet, and daddy. But then when it's time to really dive into this book and learn what God required of us, now it becomes bitter. Now it becomes untasteful in your mouth. It's like, you know, I want to spit this out. I don't have no parts of that book now. That's the wisdom that brings forth bitterness. Because now you're learning what's required of you, and you're saying, I, I don't think I can live up to that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, want, I don't want no part of that book. You see what I'm saying? That's what he's going into, the sweet and the bitter. But guess what? Medicine don't taste good, but it's what? It's good for you. So read verse 22 again. That's right. That's right. Because I got to stand. When you start, when you come into this truth and you understand that, okay, my family ain't keeping the commandments. So you know what the judgment for that is. Mm -hmm. That's the bitter thing is to say, my mama going to die in this world. My mama going to die in Babylon. My daddy going to die in Babylon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Christ said, look, that's what you're going to go through. Look, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. The book of St. Matthews, chapter 10, verse 22. And ye shall be hated for all men for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he that endured to the end 
shall be saved. That's what we got to think. It, be focused on enduring. Enduring. This walk is not going to be easy. You got to focus on enduring till the end. Enduring till the end. So, we'll jump to verse 32 again. Moses, Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 32. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before man, mm -hmm. him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. So, that also means you got to stand for God's commandments. You can't call nobody to sin when you're right there along with them. You ain't professing Christ. You think Christ would just let somebody sin right before him and he ain't saying nothing? That's professing Christ. You got to call out sin. That's our job. You know? But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. you know? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace. He ain't come to bring all nations together and give hugs and kisses. No. He came to see. He ain't come to send peace. Read on. But a sword. But a sword. What a sword do? Divide. I came to pull you out from the world. I'm calling y'all out of this wicked place. Read on. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Now, this man, if he lived in the father in the house with his father, and his father don't want to keep the commandments, y'all gonna be at variance. Young men, y'all gonna be at variance. You keeping the commandments in your father not. That's what Christ came to do. Read on. And the daughter against her mother. The same goes for the daughter. The daughter lived with her mama. Mama don't want to keep the commandments. Y'all are going to be at variance. Don't worry about it. It's normal. It's normal. When it comes to this truth. That's why I say, he that endureth till the end, the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with stuff like that, that's what you got to pray and fast for. You know what I'm saying? Lord, see, my mama getting on my nerves. My daddy getting on my nerves. My, my, whoever it is, your wife or whatever, your or your husband, they get on you. That's what you pray and fast for. You ask God that look, if you you've got to pray and fast for the most high to put you in a position to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be praying and fasting for no for no car. God is gonna bless you with it. You gotta pray and fast and find a way the Lord help me keep these commandments because you got to see the reward at the end. It's a great reward in keeping the commandments, man. You know, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, mm -hmm. and it means that means somebody in there ain't lining up. You got a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. Somebody ain't lining up. Somebody ain't keeping the commandments, and somebody keeping the commandments. Everything that we just read in verse thirty-five, you got somebody's keeping the commandments, and somebody's not. Yep, yeah. you know. And a man's fool shall be they of his own household. Who in the house ain't keeping the commandments? Who in the house ain't keeping the commandments? Every man know. Every man know. You got to check it. You got to correct it. You know. He that loveth father or mother more than me. So you going to allow your mother or your father to keep breaking the commandments right there in your face? Mm -hmm. If that's the situation where you in that house, you got to try to make a way to get out. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you still honor and respect your parent or whatever. But you got to find a way. That's like I'm saying. That's the type of stuff that you pray and fast for. You know? Is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. If you don't, uh, if you don't uh, follow God and allow allow that sin to entice you or be pulled into that sin, you ain't worthy of Christ. You ain't worthy. You know. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me, and you don't matter if it's your son or your daughter. Read. Is not worthy of me because some of us dealing with that. Some of us got to put our kids away. You know. And he. That take it not his cross mm -hmm. and follow it after me. Meaning you take up this Bible and keep the commandments. That's exactly what it's talking about. That's taking up your cross. Read. Is not worthy of me. And guess what else it is? Christ was crucified on that cross. He's telling you, you're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. Which one is that? that we just read that. But it said, you shall be persecuted for my name's sake. Taking up your cross. Read on. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. If you find your life, you shall lose it. Lose what? That old life. I don't want to be around y'all wicked people no more anyway. That old man dead. You know what I'm saying? That's how, I, that's how what our attitude got to be. He said, you're going to lose that. You're going to lose the, the cares of this world. It's time to go through it so we can get the kingdom. You know? And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Meaning that you let that old man die. You become this new man in Christ and you're going to find life eternal. Life everlasting. You know? He that receiveth you 
receiveth me. And he that receive what? What? Receive you what? Giving him the commandments, telling him that he can repent through Christ. If he received that, then he will receive Christ. It's got to be, it's, it's got to go either way. You're going to go in the way of the sinner, or the sinner going to come in the way of the Most High and cry in Christ. That's the only way. Read on. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Mm -hmm. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Mm -hmm. That's us. Come on. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. That's the ones keeping the commandments. Come on. And, and what's, the, what's the reward of the righteous, brothers and sisters? And that's right. That's right. Read on. And whosoever shall give to, and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, mm -hmm. only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. That's heavy too, because that's going into Sirach 12. When you will do well, know whom you giving it to. If you will do well, you better bless the brother that's keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. Bless the sister that's keeping the commandments, because Christ said, you're going to get a reward. What's the one? He, man, is, uh, I know, the Numbers 25, he said, he, when he told Balaam, yeah. he said, you curse Jacob, you're going to be cursed. Exactly. But you bless Jacob, you're going to be blessed. Uh -huh. So the ones that's keeping the commandments, it's up to us to bless look out for each other. That's what we got to do. And it ain't always got to be money. Like I was saying, it could be prayer. It could be fasting. You know what I'm saying? Scriptures. So... Let's go to Sirach. We almost done. We almost done. Ecclesiastes uh, thirty in verse no thirty Sirach thirty one in verse twenty. We still speak. We speaking on how to uh, uh, get spiritual health, build up your spirit, and also in the spiritual health, going going physical health going to come with it. You just got to follow these dietary laws and follow the way that the Most High telling us to eat. You'll be healthy. And the Apocrypha, the book of Sirach, chapter 31, verse 20. and verse 20, which is on page 89. Sound asleep, cometh of moderate eating. Well, what? Sound asleep, cometh of moderate eating. So that means don't be eating in excess. You don't need a whole lot of food. You gonna sleep good if you just eat moderately. Moderately, you know. He rises early, mm -hmm. and his whip are with him. Mm -hmm. But the pain of watching and cola and pangs of the belly are with unsatiable man. This man that don't eat right now, he up burping, farting, getting up, going to the bathroom. He got diarrhea because that's what cola is. Still, <laughs> right, right. Because he ain't eating the way he's supposed to eat. He ain't sleeping good. Now he ain't working with an attitude. So uh, from there, let's go to uh, 30. Sirach 30, verse 16. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 16. Which is also page 89. There's no riches above a sound body. Right. We don't, where, what it says, it says no riches above a sound body. It don't matter how much money you got, because guess what? You can die unhealthy. Mm -hmm. You can die unhealthy. That money don't mean nothing. A sound body, we don't. And no joy above the joy of the heart. Mm -hmm. The joy of the mind. Because when you fasting right and you eating the right food, you ain't going to be all stressed in your mind. You ain't going to be having old demons jumping on you. Oh, no, I got to look at that. I got to look at that. No, when you fast and you eating right, you do what you supposed to do. That builds up your spirit. You ain't gonna have that urge to smoke no more. Like Eli was saying, the sisters won't have that urge to gossip. The sisters won't be hating each other. The brothers won't be uh, uh, dealing with the stuff that they're dealing with. Whatever sin it is, you know what I'm saying? We keep these commandments, you have a sound mind. Read on. Death is better than a better life or continual sickness. Mm -hmm. So from there. Ecclesiastes the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. The sleep of a hard working man is sweet. It's sweet. We can't be complaining about having to do work because it's a man or woman. You can't be so slothful. So the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Read on. Whether he eat little or much. It don't matter because he's dog tired. He can put in the work. Read on. But the abundance of the rich 
will not suffer him to sleep. Yeah, because he got all that money. He got to worry about, oh, well, somebody will take my money. People call him all night. Let me borrow this and let me borrow that. It don't matter. The money don't matter. Like I said, we, we dealing with spiritual health leads to physical health. So that's what we're dealing with. Hard work. Don't be scared of hard work. And, and you don't have to eat a whole lot of food. You don't have to eat a whole lot of food. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 20. Fasting how? I'm going to show you how fasting build up your spirit. And the Apocrypha of the book, Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 23, which is on page 25. Nevertheless, a vow will cease yet seven days more. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt not fast in them. So before that, Ezra had already fasted seven days. He was fasting for his nation because we was uh, in captivity in the Babylonians mm -hmm. or the Persians. One, I think it was the Persians. We was in captivity, so he was fasting for his people. Like I said, you know, when you when you fast, send up prayers for the righteous. You fast for yourself. You fast for your family, and also you you fast for your nation. Matter of fact, if you fasting for your nation, your family involved. Fast for you? Yep, the Persian means captivity. Yep. So his people was in the Persian means captivity. He went and inquired the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm going to come talk to you, Ezra, but I want you to fast seven days. Same thing he did with Moses. Because he wanted to give Ezra these scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's why we got what we're reading here. Read on. Verse 24. But go into a field of flowers mm -hmm. where no house is built in, and eat only the flowers of the field. Mm -hmm. Taste no flesh. No meat. Drink no wine, no wine, but eat flowers only. Only the herbs, only the herbs and the flowers, only the herbs. So that's what Ezra would eat. We run up down to verse twenty-six. And pray unto the highest continually. And do what? And pray unto the highest continually. That's that's the thing. You got to pray and fast. Read on. Then will I come and talk with thee. Then the Most High will come deal with us. Is that not what Eli just said? It got something that he don't understand in the scriptures. That's exactly what he just said. You pray and you fast and wait for the Lord to give you that understanding. That's exactly how we got the Bible. That's how we got the Bible. That's down to verse 26. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read 2 Ezra 12 and 51. Did he read 26? No, right. Oh, let's read 26. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Verse 26. So I went my way into the field, which is called Arden, mm -hmm. like as he commanded me. And there I sat around the flowers, and did eat of the herbs of the field, mm -hmm. and the meat of the same satisfied me. Meat of the same, the herbs of the field satisfied him. So he only ate the meat. The, I mean, the meat, the herbs was his meat, is what he's saying. The herbs, the herbs. Now let's go to St. Andrews 12. Verse 51. The book, 2nd Edges, chapter 12, verse 51, which will be on page 29. Mm -hmm. But I remain still in the field seven days. Seven more days. Ezra was doing it, man. Read on. As the angels commanded me, and did eat only in those days of the flowers of the field, mm -hmm. and had my meat of the earth. So he just fasting. Ezra just kept fasting. He just kept praying until he just... Uh, uh, yep, got the answer. Now let's um let's go to uh um, sec fourteen verse twenty-two. Another good point with that is you see how you continue to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times you'll think that okay, well I'll, I'll pray and fast this one time and the Lord's gonna come deal with me right then. No, 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 it don't work like that. This happens over a course of time. You think you're trying the most high. The Most High is trying you mm -hmm. because He's going to come and reveal that thing to you and He's ready. A lot of us like to come inside this truth with that Christianity, uh, that Christianity uh, mindset, thinking that, oh, well, y'all said this, so I'm going to put this to practice right now and see. And if I don't get the answer, then I know this is a bunch of BS. No. The Most High is trying you to see how long you're going to continue to come and inquire for Him to come and deal with you. Then when you least suspect it, that's when you get the name of Hammer drop on you. And it's going to come to you like a ton of bricks. Sometimes you'll find yourself tearing up. You're like, damn, I've had nobody around to see me cry. Oh, Lord. That was heavy. That's sometimes that's how it happens. You see what I'm saying? But you got to man up and you got to understand, hey, thank you, Lord. All praise to the most high. Let me go ahead and drop this name of knowledge on them boys like that. That's how it works. That's correct. A lot of times we, we want things, but we don't want to work for it. 
When you ask for fasting, you showing the most high that you really want it. You got to show him that you really want it. He ain't going to just give you, give you nothing. Ain't nothing free in life. We know that anyway. Mm-hmm. Verse 20. The book, 2nd Edges, chapter 14 and verse 20. It's on page 31. Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. So what the conversation was, he was telling Israel, um, it was, it was inquiring why Israel is going through what they're going through. And he was saying that the law is burnt because the Babylonians and Persians were burning the Bible. So he was like, damn, well, how are they going to have uh, um, the Bible? What, what's going on? How, what, what are they going to have in the future? So it was, that's what he said, behold, Lord, I will go, you know. But they that shall be born afterward, mm-hmm. who shall admonish them? Now, I'm about to go back to the captivity, the them on the captivity and preach to them. But what about, what about my, um, my, ans- my, my um, descendants? Right. What about the other descendants? Do we do that? We are everybody this world. Today, we all about self, 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 me, me, me. Our forefathers was not like that. He was fasting 40 days and 40 nights for his people. We know. Thus the world is standing in darkness. Because this world is full of evil. He had already told Ezra in chapter 5, the world going to be set in darkness. Well, he was like, I'm about to go and prove the people now, but Lord, who going to prove them? Watch this. And they that dwell therein are without light. Because mm, we're going to be in the, there's going to be a time where it was without light. Read. For yeah. thy law is burnt. That's what the light is. That's the same precept. Proverbs 6 and 63. Uh huh. We know. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee. So if we don't have the law. We ain't gonna know what's going on, or the works that shall begin. Come on. But if I have found grace before thee, mm-hmm. send the Holy Ghost unto me, mm-hmm. and I shall write all that had been done in the world oh, since oh. the beginning. Did he say send the Holy Ghost and I shall write? That's what he said. Then he says, send the Holy Ghost and I'm going to fall out and flop and, and slob and act a fool. <laughs> he says, send the Holy Ghost and I shall write. Let you know that the Holy Ghost is the laws of God, which were received by the dispensation of angels, telling the, the prophets what to write. That's what the Holy Ghost is. But that makes the old Christianity folks now nah, look like a bunch of fools. Because that's show you the Holy Ghost was way back then. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which were written in the law. In the law, come on. That man may well, write. Hold up, just like what brother say. Uh, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning. So, so what was telling Moses? Who was telling Moses to write the first five books in the beginning? The Holy Ghost through the Spirit of Christ. What well, is Christmas, man? Mm-hmm. Read on. That man may find thy path. So he's Ezra saying, I'm gonna write these laws so that we, the Israelites, after him shall find their path. All praises that the Lord put his spirit on, because that's what we read here today. Read. And that day which will live in the latter days may we, live. Man, in the latter days? In the latter days may live. That's how we got the Bible by our brothers praying, fasting, all now we got a way to repent. We got a way to repent. It's Tobit chapter 12, verse 8. Just showing what our forefathers went through so we can have this Bible, man. I'll praise to the Most High. He's a mastermind, man. The book of Tobit, chapter 12, and verse 8. That'll be on page 41, 41 in the Apocrypha. Chapter 12, and verse 8. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. You got to have all three. If you really want to be blessed, you can work with all three of these. Prayer is good mm-hmm. with arms and Fasting. The Lord is telling you how to get your prayers answered. He's telling you how to get blessed. Give alms, pray, and fast. Study, study. All right. Um, Matthew chapter nine, verse fifteen. That was it. No. Oh, real. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why are you laying stuff up when, when, when we were lacking around here? We, should, we got stuff to do around here. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like I said in Numbers, them who bless Jacob, going to be blessed. Them who curse Jacob, going to be cursed. You understand? So we shouldn't have to 
And we ain't want yep, we shouldn't have to beg nobody to give alms, we shouldn't have to beg nobody to donate because we gotta keep these doors open. We trying to we trying to do big things around here. So brothers, stand up if that's the case, whatever, and do do what you're supposed to do. Like like just read the scripture. I'm just shut up. I'm just reading the scripture. Read it from the top, I'm sorry. Which one? Twelve and eight. Oh, Tobit. Oh, twelve. Mm-hmm. Tobit Tobit chapter twelve and verse eight. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. That's what God says. We're keeping the commandments. Prayer is good with fasting, give arms, and keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it's saying. Mm -hmm. Come on. A little with righteousness. I don't care if you got a quarter. Mm -hmm. You can drop a quarter in the box and you keeping the commandments. The most I might flip that quarter for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Read on. It's better than much with unrighteousness. It's better than don't worry about him uh, um, giving you money. No, he can take that sin that you're struggling with, that demon that you might be struggling with, because that's needed more than money. We go, go, no, that, read that part again. Read that part again. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. See the difference between the two? Better with the little, meaning like the brother said, you want to give a quarter. That's, that's a lot in the eyes of the Most High. Yep. And you keeping the commandments, you fasting, and you praying. Now he says, uh, better than much with unrighteousness. Meaning, this is the Christian church yep. that comes inside the Daniel Sunday uh, services and they give a thousand dollars inside the Daniel collection plate. You know what I'm saying? But they keeping no commandments. Ain't, ain't following no laws whatsoever. And he said, you think the Most High will honor that? No, he gonna look at that and say, ah, oh, that ain't crap. Hey, that person that gave the name on 25 cent, that person is more honorable than the brother or sister that gave the thousand dollars. He's going to bless that quarter more than he's going to bless that name on thousand dollars. That's what it's saying here. Read it again from the top and then you take it up. Okay. The book of Toby chapter 12 and verse 8. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. Mm -hmm. A little with righteousness is better than much. With unrighteousness. So you can give a little bit and keep the commandments, you good. Mm -hmm. But don't give a whole lot of money and you still wicked is all I do. Mm -hmm. The Lord don't want that. He ain't gonna accept that. Brother gonna we'll find the scripture with, with the Pharisee, the he came with a lot of money, and then the, the little the widow, she only had a little bit. Mm -hmm. Christ, I tell you what, she gave way more than you. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. Book of St. Matthew, chapter 9, and verse 15. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? So he's speaking a parable to the children of Israel. He says, Shall you mourn while I'm here with you? I'm putting my hands on everybody, just healing them off the top. Why are you crying? I'm here. I'm here. We know. But the days will come. Uh huh. When the bridegroom shall be taken from them, Christ was taken away from us, read. And they shall, and then shall they fast. So that's the power we got with fasting. The same thing with Christ was walking the earth and healing everybody by touching them and stuff like that. Now we got that same power, but it's got to come through fasting. It's got to come through afflicting our soul. It's got to come from prayer, righteousness, and keeping prayer, fasting, and keeping the commandments. Prayer, fasting, and keeping the commandments. That's the as a, as a body, because when you read in the book of Jonah, they all fasted, and then the most high said, "All right, I ain't gonna kill." They repented, they repented, they fasted together, and they repented, and the most high didn't put them there. All right, so from there, let's go to. Uh, go ahead. Right, go back to what brother was bringing out earlier about giving on um, fast and giving on. Um. When you look at the day spiritually and physically. When you is actually giving an arm to help the body, to help the school to grow, that also helping you in the long run. Because whatever might happen to you, say your light might get turned off. Yeah, because this is a Christian church. Yeah, you will have to come back to the brothers and then ask for a helping hand. Right. But if you ain't giving nothing, guess what? You ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> because you ain't going to be nothing to give. Yeah. So that's how we got to look at this thing. When you start to build up the, the most high temple. We gotta be able to, you know, give on. That's why God said, "Um, you let my house lacking, mm -hmm. and start fattening up your own." Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. That's right. The book of Saint Matthew, chapter nine, and verse sixteen. 
Yes, sir. No man put a piece of new cloth unto an old garment. Mm -hmm. For that which is put and to fold it up, take it from the garment. Mm -hmm. And the rent is made worse. So ain't nobody gonna take a, oh, you got a brand new shirt. Why you gonna put that brand new shirt on over the old shirt? Meet in a minute. Take that old shirt off. Throw it away. Take that old man. Throw him away. Repent. Relearn the Bible. And now apply the commandments as we should have been doing from the beginning. That's what it's talking about. You can't be that old man when you coming up in here. This ain't the Christian church we asking for tithes. No, we're telling you that you should be praying, you should be fasting, and you should be um, um, giving alms. Praying, fasting, and giving alms. Willing. Willing, right. Because we ain't asking nobody to do nothing. We're telling you what the Bible says. If you want anybody, guys, you're going to take heed to this Bible, then you're going to be blessed to heed to the commandments. And that's all of them. Read verse 17. Verse 17. Neither do men put new wine in an old bottle. Mm -hmm. Else the bottle break, mm -hmm. and the wine runneth out. Right. And the bottle perish. But they put new wine into new bottle, and both are preserved. Put, their new, put these commandments into your new body, mm -hmm. and then you will be preserved. That's, what, that's your physical and that's your spiritual health. That's the spiritual and it's the physical health. So we got to repent in Christ and keep these commandments. All right? With that, we'll say most time, time for this.